friends, and welcome back to another round of the Smite Challenger Circuit. Still over here in the European side of things, we've got our second of three sets coming out here now. It's the Highland Ravens and the Guild of Gladiators to be our second match here of the day in our final week of SCC play. This is the last chance for these teams to try and secure their spots into making it into the Masters land in just a few weeks from here. My name is Jay Beck. i got Charlie Relly joining me over here on the desk to get ready for our very first set, or our very second set. Are they our first set of the day, <laughs> our first set, yeah. It's our first one. I mean, we got to sit here and watch out on that first one. A good set there, at least by Hex Mambo, able to find a 2-0 over the formerly undefeated Niflheim Wargs. But now a little bit of a different story here. The, Sticks, or the, uh, the Highland Ravens, very close to, or they should, I believe, have already secured their spot now here in the SEC's top four. Gilded Gladiators still fighting to try and guarantee their top spot, though. Yeah, I think at this point, the Highland Ravens just want to make sure they're still in contention for that number one spot. Obviously, right now, the Wargs have lost. There's no more undefeated team, so they want to make sure, hey, we're still in contention for that number one spot. We want the bragging rights, and we want to make sure that we're still up here on the top is the same as well. Yeah, as you can see by our schedule with our first set done, Hex Mambo finding their 2-0 over the Niflheim Wargs, and we got the Ravens and Gladiators. And then, to close out our day, the Styx Ferryman and the Aru Scorpions. There are still some points of contention for all four of these teams out here. Aru Scorpions, unfortunately, they're pretty much out of here by now without a single win to their name out here, as you can see by the standings. No chance for them to get into the top four. They would need to somehow win two full sets within only one, so not possible here. But that Styx Ferryman and Gilded Gladiator spot, potentially still up for grabs here. If the Gilded Gladiators lose this set, then the Styx Ferryman would also have to win theirs up against the Scorpions. But if the Gladiators can win their set here up against the Highland Ravens, it doesn't matter, and unfortunately for the Fairman, that'd be the end of the end of the line there in that final one here. But Charlie, I mean, talking about these two teams out here, I mean, a as we talk about these teams with the Highland Ravens, I mean, this is a, a team that we came in with a lot of expectations. So far, this team has been able to pull uh, pull a lot of those through. Yeah, I would say. We've had to watch them for a while now, and they've been looking very solid. But the question was always, you know, could they compete at this level? They've been together for quite some time. And more often than not, the answer seems to be yes, even when they are finding, like, small, you know, getting behind a little bit in the early game. They're finding a little bit of stumbles here and there. They all we seem to come online. They have a great team fight late game. And I, I we put a lot of pressure on the Vaporish Coast. I mean, we put a lot of respect on his name because he really does make these huge plays, as Dave always calls out. He, the, the carry kid. I mean, he just he does very well, but the whole team I think is a unit just sticks together so well. Yeah, I mean, this is a team that you know in, in season eight of the SPL they had a lot of their struggles, especially over into the solo lane. I mean, Mogal was doing these really weird builds, and they would work out like once in a blue moon, and then they kind of would get relegated a couple times throughout there. And, and it was a team that was kind of sitting at the lower end, and now we're looking at this as a a, a three and one team who was at the top of the standings for a little bit right there with the Niflheim Wargs, and, and with the adjustments that. This Ravens team has made here. I mean, with Mogao, Rapio, Sap7, Silence, and Vaporish Coast. I mean, we talk a lot about Coast, but even talking about Mogao and even over into that mid lane, Sap7 has had a lot of improvements over his time here into the SCC. Yeah, I believe even after that last set that they just had where it was like the they were down pretty much the whole set and they were able to turn around every time Coast made these late game rotations in, they were able to win the game. And Coast was tweeting something along the lines of, you know, I get a lot of respect. A lot of people say, like, I carry these games and my team is like they, they make so much space for me. I'm able to hard carry these games because of how they play. So I think we should give a little bit of respect to the tanks on this squad as well. Mogao and Silence are able to create so much space so that this Heimdall can come in with these 6-0 plays, you know, even when the team is behind right now, he's able to just create so much space because of the tanks doing their job. Yeah, and that's something that, you know, we talk about with carries over into the SPL and whatnot. You know, we ask them, man, like, how are you able to do these games where you're going like 7-1 and one, or you're going like 5-0, and oh, and they're just sitting there like, man, I just got some really good front lines to help me out here. And, and going to the opposite side here, a team that's had a little bit of mixed success so far this phase. I mean, they came in here from the SPL qualifiers, had a little bit of a stumble, came into the SEC qualifiers looking pretty hot. Now known as the Gilded Gladiators team, Lestemix, Maskill, Sotos, Rotwin, and Toddy to round out this roster here. It's a team that has drastically changed up their play style. I mean, from Season 8 coming now, e even from the very beginning of the SPL qualifiers till this point here, this is a completely transformed team, Charlie. And a lot of it off of the back of Maskill and, and really from their coach, Alpha, who's been able to make a lot of adaptations for this team. Yeah, I would say so. You're right to highlight Maskill as well. I mean, it's just very interesting to watch. Still one of those the former Fenrir players in the league right now that are still trying to you know, make use of that pick sort of falling out of the wayside, but you're always seeing these eclectic picks, you know, trying to make them work, and they, it's, you know, mixed success, as you said. I believe they're 2-2 two and two right now, so they're they're finding some nice, solid wins and start some solid play styles, but also falling by the wayside a little bit. They're trying to, you know, find their identity still. I think it's still very early on, only four games played at this point, so still trying to figure out what works for this squad right now. 
Yeah, their last matchup was against Hex Mambo, who we just saw finally get a win over Niflheim Works and break that undefeated. So, you know, no slouch against this team, not being able to take out some of the top. I mean, going up against, you know, the SPL talent that, that some of those two those teams have out there, maybe no surprise that these guys might be struggling a little bit. Still trying to find their footing here in the SEC, but it's a team that stuck around for such a long time. I and mean, we talked to to Coach Alpha uh, Alpha 21, I believe is the, the full one there. Whenever he was here for the SPL qualifiers, he said, look, We've been together as a team. We've made like one adjustment in the last year and a half. And, and it kind of gives you, you know, sights back towards some of the former, you know, and still big shot SPL teams out there. I mean, you have ones kind of like, uh, what's the one in my immediately I'm coming to head? Uh, NRG, back when they were an SCC team. You know, they're SCC. They came in, made huge waves into the SPL. You think of Sanguine, the same way. Come through, now the Atlantis Leviathan's able to go and make these big runs here. So when you have these teams that stick together for as long as they do, Eventually, all it takes is that one little thing, that one little moment in the season to finally click for them and make those big waves. Yeah, any team that sticks together this long, they're going to be able to make those adjustments. I mean, if you've been playing together time and time again, you can sit there, you know, do the VOD review, look back and see what you did. And at that point, you're able to make those little corrections and you can really turn into one of these strong SEC teams that we see before us. Well, we'll see what changes up here in the picks and bands for game number one between the Highland Ravens and the Gilded Gladiators now that we are on that adjusted pass, that 9.4, so all the nerfs have come through. We got to see what kind of change it's made into the SPL. We've seen a lot less of the Medusa. We've been seeing a lot of Jingwei kind of pop up, Chernabog as well. Although over here in the EU, Heimdall still seems to be that hunter that teams go towards. We see him banned out already by the Gladiators. Yeah, you have to ban away the Heimdall if you're against the Ravens, I feel. I mean, just letting Coast have such a safe pick is never going to be a great option. Thought, though, still that long-range artillery mage that people don't want to deal with. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Cthulhu either prioritized or banned away as well. I think both of these soul laners have a Cthulhu in the back pocket, but Mogao has some interesting picks of his own right where he, do he doesn't need to go towards these meta picks. He can build whatever he wants. He can go the, the, the full damage uh, Jormungandr if he wants to, so we'll have to see what he decides to do with these picks here. Daji and Yamoja, pretty run-of-the-mill bands away. Yeah, the Daji may be the one that kind of doesn't really stick out as much, but maybe is an important one here. I mean, that's one that's been consistently banned away. Though Kleena's still available, even with some of the nerfs that she's seen, a lot of players are still throwing some priority towards her as far as just her overall damage output, but as far as a first pick goes, it's going to be Kepri here for the side of the Ravens, uh, a god that has as well seen a lot of prioritization in picks and bands. I mean, very highly contested, especially in the SPL level. So any surprise that we're seeing that same kind of trickle down here into the SCC? Yeah, I mean, Kepri definitely a strong pick. I wouldn't have expected the first pick, but I think they just want to make sure they have that safety on their draft, you know, it's always going to be a solid answer back to, you know, pick like the Kali, for example, that we just saw locked in there where, you know, it's a single target assassin that wants to get the reset on her passive Shiba. and get the HP back. But if you deny that, it's going to be very solid. This time around, though, they're going for the Shiva, and that could be in the solo lane or that could be in the jungle. We see it more often in the SPL in the jungle, but I'm not going to, you know, bet on anything just uh, yet, hey. as well as the Baron. So that Baron is definitely going to be in the solo lane because we've seen Mogao play it before, which means that Shiva probably going to be in that jungle. Man, I love Baron, dude. Baron's such a fun god, and, and I kind of miss the days of the Baron meta, whether it was Baron mid or Baron support or Baron solo, no matter where you throw that god. It's always a pleasure to watch out there. One of my favorite gods, just one of, uh, overall, just design-wise, such a fun god between his kid, his actual, like, character design. It also has, like, the best jump animation in the oh, game, yeah. if, I, if I'm just going to throw that one out there. <laughs> but Gladiators do get Cthulhu, Kali, and Iset, a very powerful top three item here. I mean, we talk about how Cthulhu's, you know, kind of top of the meta right now for that solo lane in the Iset with this flexibility here as well, still making her a top pick, Trelly. Yeah, we still don't know where that Iset could go just because of how flexible the pick is. We see it in you pretty much four roles at the moment. Right now, though, probably more so leaning towards the mid or the support, but the option is always going to be there in the jungle and things of that nature. The Chiron will be banned away. I think it's going to be a smart option there because Toddy does like that Chiron. A lot of safety in lane, lots of range. But Jingwei, a pick that we've seen a fair bit in the SPL just because of the changes to Crusher and Aussie. Death Toll not really the starter anymore because of the, you know, the Gilded. So it looks like Jingwei moving over towards that, that sort of crit and shred meta and answer back Chernabog. That's going to be a very solid, annoying rotation-based duo lane where they can just get all across the map very quickly. Talk about a lot of healing in this composition, though, between Baron's team healing when he can when he managed to get off that second ability in the midst of a team fight. Then you have Shiva with his ultimate's going to get some healing and some damage out in the middle of the fight. And then you throw a hell out of here. I I'm looking over here at the Gilded Gladiators roster. I'm going, man, we need a lot of anti heal to be able to deal with this. And Eset now with this Atlas locked in shows that this Eset will be going over towards that mid roll. So now that we do have a nice little look at the at the roundup here, you have Atlas Chernabog versus the Jingwei Kepri lane. 
I cannot imagine for anything in the life of me to think that Ravens will add any kind of pressure here in this duo lane here. But let's take a look now. Game number one between the Highland Ravens and the Gilded Gladiators ready to go here for our second match of the day in the EU SCC in our final week of play. Gilded, Gladi Gilded Gladiators need to win this one to guarantee themselves in that top four. Otherwise, there still could be some potential back and forth here between those ones. But as I was saying, Charlie, uh, Kepri Jingwei is not a dual lane to me that ever screams we're going to get pressure. That is a please God don't kill us. Let us get to like 20 minutes and then we'll be good kind of a lane. <laughs> I can't believe Mogao got the health chalice. I mean, you got to get your brew, man. He didn't even want the brew. He just went for the I health chalice. I think it's chalice. both. I mean, he could get both, but you know, it's one of my favorite voice lines. Though. Be sure to grab your brew or be sure to grab some brew. And he said, you know what? You guys get it. I don't really want it. So I'm going to go with the health chalice. Of course, you have your blue buff. So it, I'm not going to say it was a bad call. It's just a little disrespectful to the Baron's brew. But anyways, the Ravens, they've been liking these healing comps. They went for the Afro and the Sylvanas last week. They're really trying to make sure that they have a lot of sustain online. It seems to be just the way that they're drafting, at least currently. It will be an interesting lane now that you mentioned it, just the fact that they don't have too much pressure. And they did go for the start where Coast does not hit level two. So there will be a little bit more pressure in that duo lane specifically because Toddy already has that second ability, probably trying to sit a little bit back because once that kinetic charge comes in, end of the pull of silence, not going to be in too much danger because remember, it's a Chernabog. Really not too much pressure for either of these lanes, to be honest. Yeah, no, not a whole lot here. I mean, you'll get a little bit there with the Atlas maybe to kind of help you out here, but it'll be a fairly passive lane to say. I mean, we'll see like little bits of abilities thrown here and there, but probably not a lot of kill pressure until those junglers start making their way over, but they're all the way on the right side of the map instead. Silence will get rooted out by Toddy. That's at least one little combo that that lane does have over there. But as I'm looking across the build, this is something that we've been seeing a lot from, from these solo lane guardians, especially these Cthulhu's. Tainted Steel picked up very early by Lestemix, but as we said, with the amount of healing they have, maybe no surprise. Yeah, I was going to say, it's a good build just in its own right, but against this squad, that's probably what you want to deal with. I think Cthulhu, as a pick, really just does a bunch of little tick damage over time, not too much burst, so if it's just getting healed up at that point, your Descend to Madness can pretty much be wasted, so I think a smart pick here. Sotos will get blinked on by Rapio. So close, not going to be enough damage. We'll get out just barely, but looks like Sap wants to go for one more pull. Oh, that was close. Not going to find it there. That knock of immunity on the wing gust, making sure they don't get pulled back in by that sweep out of the Shiva there. So a small little bit of counterplay there that Sotos does have up against Rapi on that mid. Probably the only reason that Sotos doesn't go down there. A charge in by Rotwin. Pick up is good on the silence. He'll throw him right into the root combo. The shell is popped, but it's not going to be enough. It's Toddy online for first blood on the side of the Gilded Gladiators. Yeah, that shell not going to be enough. You usually want to see the beads against a pick like Atlas, especially on an immobile character like Kepri, where you, you know, it's very easy to catch out because you're such a large target. So unfortunately, that's going to be first blood. And now you have to deal with a Chernabog with a lead. I don't think that's anything that Coast isn't used to at this point. Getting behind in lane is sort of his forte where he's just, you know, my team's getting a little bit out pressured. I'm getting invaded. I'm just going to sit back at the tower line. But it looks like the purple buff won't be invaded, at least not yet. So that's not the biggest deal in the world if you are a Highlands Raven fan. But just making sure to get some pressure in lane is Sap really trying to poke out Sotos. You don't have this much mana on the hell pick. As you can see, Sap's already running out of mana here. So throwing this many abilities is going to hurt early on in the game, but it looks like a possible Book of Thoth being built here. So not going to be the biggest issue in the world as this game goes on. Is this going to be that nasty Book of the Dead build that this I hell think is it going might for? Be. <laughs> Just so gross, man. Like, I mean, I know we've seen nerfs to it. We've seen, we've seen the successes. I can, I can call it gross because it is kind of a little bit gross here. So is that pull in. On towards like Stemix rooted in by the snake and it burned down. Rapio helping to get that kill credit assist there. It'll be Mogao with the final swing. That'll put the Ravens on the board finally for themselves. But maybe another fight over here in the duel lane. The knockup is good. Rotwin goes in. It doesn't have the pull on to Vaporce Coast. Does fans get the beads out of Hunter? But it's the Guardians versus the Hunters right now. Rotwin is winning his matchup. Toddy going even. With Ice Silence, Rawan gets pulled back in by the pluck. And Kevin Porus Coast picks up another kill for themselves over here in the duo lane. Highland Ravens up with another. Yeah, I was worried about that minion wave. I was like, everything is going to get body blocked here. But oh, yeah, Jingwei has a lot of, you know, AoE autos as well as the updraft, a lot of just burst damage in the own right. Silence, though. Beautiful pull to make sure to confirm that one. If you if you want to talk about Kepri not getting beads, Atlas also doesn't have beads. So Rawan. That pull is going to make sure that you're locked down for quite a long time here. And the Devos probably going to be fi finished up for both of these hunters as we see a little bit of aggression 
in that middle lane. But again, Sap has like no mana, so there's not going to be too much trading, at least at the beginning of this matchup. And Rawin did make the rotation over, so they do try to get a little bit over aggressive at these mid camps. Could look for some aggression. Looks like they are just going to back off here, but. As I mentioned, it looks like Toddy is going for the, the Death's Toll instead of that Gilded Star. Rapio will not get silenced out there. That could have been bad. Could have been very bad here. Did Mogao go for a Bumba's the last time that he ran this guy? That just kind of that just kind of stuck out to me, the fact that he's running a Bumba's Dagger on a solo lane Baron Soundy. Did, did he do this before? Yeah, he has been liking the Bumba's. Usually people go like a Tier 2 item and then go to the Bumba's late game, but he's just been building it first and trying to get that Bumba's oh. Hammer online. Late game, the cooldowns are going to be nice, but you don't get too much benefit out of it, at least right now. Well, it will be the Celestial Legion Helm. I was wondering maybe if it was going to be a Lotus Crown there. You know, it's still with the healer in there. Lotus Crown can give some of those extra procs, but will just be that Legion Helm. Still a lot of power, a lot of decent amount of protections to the item itself, but it is physical defense, so I guess maybe trying to deal with any rotations from Mogao here. So not going to have any direct lane defense up against Lestemix here, but... Then again, in Cthulhu versus Baron, we saw how it went pre-level 5 at least, but Lestemix will have ult the next time that that rotation comes around. Yeah, I think just a little bit worried about the rotation from Mass Kill. I think recognizing that Mogao doesn't have any sort of beads right now just to teleport. The only option you have when you are going to die is to, you know, go into that life of the party and try and survive as best you can, but... At least you have a little bit of defense now in that build. I don't think you're going to be worried too much about the Cthulhu from behind, just the tier 2 Void Stone. So I don't hate the build right now. You're trying to defend off from the ganks more so than the actual lane matchup. We'll have to see where these builds go to as Sap does finish up that Book of Thoth. Going to get some mana online very quickly. But I see a large power spike from Askel. That Kinsai's already finished. Item number one for the Kali. You don't have any sort of, you know, stick ability, I guess you would call it the able to, you know, you can't get the Kins off too much right now. You don't have any like hastened ring or any or hastened blade, anything like that. So the Katana tree will help out a little bit. Just no movement speed quite yet in the build. Yeah, I mean, typically we've been seeing more of like the Scream-esque builds with Crusher and uh, Charge Bow, things of that nature here. Not gonna be the case, at least in this matchup here. Silence will eat a little bit of damage there from the mid laner, but it's a fight over the mid camps. Maskill goes in, finds a stun up against Rapio, and returning a lot of fire back to this Shiva. The ultimate comes out from Silence to allow Rapio to run, and that will give him more than enough distance. That extra movement speed is good. And Coastal have to use the airstrike as the pull from Rotwin was about to connect, but by Porsche goes, making sure they use the ultimate instead of using those speeds that did come off of cooldown just in that moment. Reinitiation by Silence, and good lord, Sonus' health bar has just completely melted away. Sap credit to the kill on this Hell. Yeah, Hell does a lot of healing, but you know what? She also does a lot of his damage. Rapio already back in the fight, will get the destruction out of Mass Kill. I don't think they have enough damage to finish this one, so Mass Kill will make it out of there. The speed buff not quite spawned in yet, and it looks like they checked it right before it spawned, and Rapio is not going to be able to invade that unless he sticks around a little bit longer, and it looks like the rotation's already coming in. I don't think that speed buff is going to get taken away, but looking at the ADC builds, Coast is going for the chin size and the devos, which, you know, we've seen a lot on the Jingwei. Well. You go for the crit more so late game, but Toddy already recognizes there's going to be a lot of crit coming from this Jingwei just built into the kit, so going to go for that first item, possibly the Wind Demon, or more likely that anti the anti-heal shuriken. Oh yeah, could see that Shadow Steel. That could be an option here. We've seen, what was it, I think Barracuda ran that at one point. I know that um, Veronica in the mid lane was running like Toxic Blade, Brawler's Beat Stick, Charybdis, and then would sell the Beat Stick for, for that Shadow Steel late game when he got some crit online. So we'll keep our eyes on Toddy's build to see which of those shurikens he does end up going towards. It will be the Devourer's Gauntlets both ways, Gauntlet of Thebes, on both sides for the supports and shells as well here. So at least pretty much parity amongst all of the relics here. It seems that everybody's gone for the same relics as their opposition. Sotos again will have to get away from the root. That wing gust, it, that wing gust might be the one saving grace that Sotos has in like every one of these team fights. Oh yeah, just trying not to get rooted down or like knocked up or anything like that. It's gonna be the name of the game trying to survive on this E set right now. Hasn't worked too much, 0-1, but we'll have a little bit more survivability as the game goes on. It looks like Mogao is really not worried about the magical damage this game. It will be a breastplate of Valor after the fact. So just physical defense right now for the solo laner. Has the teleport available if they want to make those rotations over to the Gold Fury, things like that. But not quite upgraded yet, so we'll have to expend a pretty large cooldown. And it's going to have to be to a tower. No sort of ward shenanigans just yet for the solo laners. As Lestemix going into what seems to be a Witchblade pretty early on here. I think recognizing there's a few auto attackers that you might want to shut down on the side of the Highland Raven, so always going to be a solid build. Whenever I see a Cthulhu and I see a Witchblade, I'm like, oh, he's going to live for quite some time. We'll see red buff picked up there by Soto. It's a one-level lead in the mid 
between Sap and Sotos here. One level up for Mass Kill, though, in the jungle, though Mogao's got a level of his own here. So bouncing back and forth with a couple of level leads between these teams. We saw earlier on it was 1,500 gold. Now we're pushing upwards to near 2,500 in favor of the Highland Ravens. Same with the XP. So starting to plateau a little bit at this point here. We haven't seen much action since that last little skirmish that started at like one enemy red buff and then climbed its way all the way up to the other side of, to the other side of the map there for a red so a lot of back and forth between these teams early on. Yeah, we did see a fair bit of poke on that left side of the map, and I have to imagine that's because Tati got some lucky crits with that Shadow Seal Shuriken. So shutting down some of that sustain, but also a bit of attack speed and crit chance is going to go a fair bit for the Chernabog, at least early on. And then once you can make those rotations with the ultimate, that's also going to be pretty impactful. I think trying to shut down not only, I mean, there's so much healing, man. I was going to say not only Saps healing on this hell, not only the life steal from Coast, You've got the Shiva ultimate, you have Lamogao's too, that's going to just, so much constant sustain. I think they're right to say, hey, we need to get as much anti-heal as possible. But I imagine Lestemix probably can hear the, at least the abilities being used on the Pyromancer, but it's getting shredded. Yeah, it's down to already a quarter HP. Lestemix won't even be able to get there in time on this Cthulhu, is clearing out his Harpy camp at the top side there. And may not have noticed that it was happening, may not have seen the abilities, but either way, that one will be a Pyromancer going the way of the Highland Ravens. An extra infusion of gold going to the Order side team. And Moga, as you said, this double physical, I mean, maybe a little strange considering what the full composition is the other way. Sonus gets a big heal with that circle protection. Has to use the beads to get out of the pull from Silence. Mass kill blinks in. Doesn't find a stun up against Sap. and says it's a massive heal going back his way as he does heal up not just his teammate, but himself as well. Yeah, circle protection is down. Now, but Mask Kill might want to get a little bit more active here. Rapio is here, but look at that damage. Destruction can't even be popped just yet. He barely gets it in time in order to be able to fire that one back in the fight. But he's got to jump away from Rapio. Mogao has rotated over and finds a kill on Soto. Still charging up that coffin. Who will he pull in? It's going to be Rot when stunned down and knocked up. Nowhere to go. Sap. Credited to the kill for the Highland Ravens. That's their fifth. And Melistemix gets grabbed back in, rooted at the end of his own dash. And Coast will join the party to pick up a kill of his own. A three swing to the Ravens. That's a five man rotation to the mid lane. It looks like Toddy does not want to be invited to this party. But look where what? they're going. There's no Pyromancer here, J Mac. There's only one objective they're going for. They are going to pull an 11 minute Fire Giant. This might be one of the earliest Fire Giants we've seen. Toddy rotates over to distract Sap. But Toddy has lost half of its HP to just this hell alone. And the Fire Giant's not going down very quickly. It seems no. that the Ravens will realize their damage output might not be quite as high as they wished or thought it might have been here. So Fire yeah. Giant stop, but a good, a good stop there, at least by Toddy. There's a fair bit of healing in their comp. Like, sir, they could have pulled it. And if no one came over, it would have eventually gone down. But, I mean, looking at Coast's build, there's no sort of penetration for the Fire Giant right now. If that was like an Xe or something, maybe you could you have a shot. But that's just a chin size, which unfortunately does not proc on Fire Giant. You're not shredding the HP of the Fire Giant in that regard. So that would have been a very long and drawn-out pull there. That reminds me of when the, the Leviathans ended up throwing that game and they, they it was like an 11 minute FG call like that's the early these early style of FGs that just take so long to get through if you have like an Anubis ult maybe you could have done it but this is not the sort of game where that's going to be happening here Sap stuck around a little bit too long has no mana here there's going to be a Scarab's Blessing come through does have it it will get popped there standing inside the circle of protection a good call by Sap so he'll make it out of here it, it almost kind of reminds me, you know, when it, when it teams go in kind of under leveled up against here, it, it's like watching like a like a wow or any kind of very like raid in general. Like I, I watch raids and you're going sitting there like, man, look at the healer go. The healer is putting out all these numbers, but the damage is just so low. It's like these health bars are going nowhere. Rapio is going to the back line, if anything, but he's going to get a lot of damage thrown right back towards his way. Get some healing with that ultimate. Mass kill is shredding through that health bar. This Kali has revved up the chainsaw and is cutting him down. Yeah, I think the idea there was try to heal through that damage, but remember, there's a fair bit of anti-heal for the Guild of Gladiators already built. I think just the Divine Ruin in that point, but still, it's going to be enough to say, hey, your ult's not healing as much as you thought, and you can't really survive through this Hasten, Katana, and Kinzai's Kali mass kill. First kill of the game, and that's going to be annoying. You don't want this Kali getting online. That's always going to be your ticking time bomb in a game like this. You don't want to worry about that. Mogao, just going to have a little bit of a party. Not too long of a party, and it's over. Hey, a party's a party when Mogao brings out the coffin. Now he doesn't have it to help the rest of his team. A lot of CC thrown towards Sap and Silence, but the damage instead is turned over towards Rotwin Root. A little bit short there from Silence. Won't find Sotus. A lot of damage still. Sap. Charging forward on this hell. Mogao does find a root, but not much more beyond that root there. Highland Ravens 
with about a three and a half thousand gold lead here early on to the game. Ghost will start up the Gold Fury, but he's the only one here right now. Sap will rotate over. That should give him a lot of extra healing. But he doesn't quite have the damage output to do this one by himself. But Sap's eating a lot too. Now with the Stemix in, with that blink out of the Cthulhu, that will be the disengage from the Raven. Sure, Raven's got a lot of healing, just don't quite have the damage to be soloing objectives this early. Yeah, the Silver Branch Bro is finished, but still not quite enough to try and melt through this gold frame. Mogao is going to try to pull as well, but I think this, this is just a little bit of a miscommunication here. They really do not want to try to pull this. They're looking for a fight. Looks like Coast will be able to dash out of that charge, but the Kinetic Charge comes in. Rawin wants to chase this. Rawin will. He'll get that airstrike out too, so Coast insists on making sure not to use a single relic during the engagement. Instead, we'll utilize the passive for, from that agility once he's thrown up in the air to get that extra distance away and then use the ultimate to get the final disengage after. So Coast will hold on to both beads and Aegis and on his back will start up into that shuriken tree of his own. So some crit now coming online for the Jingwei and a lot of damage thrown towards Sotos here in this mid lane. He has been the eye of target for the Highland Ravens for most of this game and mass kill chunked down to about 10% of his health. Will force teleport out of Lestemix and an answer back here by this Cthulhu. Rapio goes in the back line, and Sotos has no answer to it. Rapio picks up the kill. Rotwin picks up Sap, but doesn't get much more than there. Instead, it's a quick Scarab's Blessing out of silence. That'll get Sap back alive. And look at all of the healing coming from this hell, coming from this Shiva to keep Sap alive. He will stay in this fight for way longer than anybody has any right to save for. But that triple pull in by Rotwin has just turned the fight back for the Gladiators, but now the coast rotating back over. Mass kill into the back line and the Coffin charged up by Mogao. That will pull Mass Kill in, and the Destruction will keep him alive, but maybe only for a moment's notice. There's just way too much healing right now. There's no Curse Dong, because there's only a little bit of anti-heal at the moment, and Sap is just sustaining the whole squad in these team fights. Of course, you lose Rapia, which is unfortunate, but if you get this Tier 2 tower, that would certainly make up for it, and it looks like that's what they're posturing to do. Sap literally died a moment ago and might just die here. Needs a big heal to come through, but won't find it. Circle of protection out of Sotos to finally kill the mid laner. Probably like 30, 40 seconds after it should have already happened out here. My goodness, the amount of healing that the Ravens have between their kits and themselves. And maybe as you said, the lack of anti-heal up for the Gladiators right now. Kind of might be a, a call to themselves like, guys, we might want to get a little bit more for the next fight. Yeah, I think it would be a little bit helpful, <laughs> at least for what we just witnessed there. And again, I thought that Sap already had the Book of the Dead because I saw how big that, that just regen was because I, was, I saw the shell and then the HP. But no, Book of the Dead was not finished there. That was just the survivability of a hell with some great peel from Silenced as well as the shell, making sure to try and keep this mid lane alive. Now Sap has that. Gonna be even more annoying to try and kill at this point, but I think the Gilded Gladiator is probably recognizing, hey, we need a little bit more anti-heal in our own right, and Rotwin immediately gonna pick up that Curse Donk. So that's gonna be a great pickup for them if they are able to win these fights in the first fight. That's what you wanna do with Curse Donk. You wanna start the fight and end the fight very quickly because if that Onk wears off and they get to heal up, you're not winning that second fight. Yeah, that, that, that is usually the name of the call there. So in a fully upgraded one at that, so that's a lot of extra anti-heal and a little bit of extra sustain for the team as a whole. Fight between Toddy and Vaporous Coast, and that one's not being won by Toddy. He's going to land right back down <laughs> into place. And Coast will put him in the dirt with a double crit right after. Good Lord. Coast just hits him. I think he hits him with like maybe six autos total and then that updraft as well just to take him down. A nice solo kill there for Vaporish Coast. Yeah, it was three autos into the into the nightmare. As Sotos is probably going to fall here as well. Not enough healing is going to survive this one, but great peel from Lestemix and Sotos will make it out. Circle protection was expended though, so they won't have that for the ensuing team fight. And that might just be the call for Gladiators to not try and continue that fight after. Now with that big team fight heal and, deal and damage dealing out there off the board. They're healing and dealing. Stop. Instead, now it's the Gladiators going for the Pyromancer while the Ravens get the Gold Fury. But Mogal, not going to let this one go quietly. Will walk over the wall, get some damage, bring out the Coffin. It'll pull in Lestemix. Probably not the ideal target that he wanted, but will at least stop the Gladiators from grabbing that Pyromancer. That puts a big objective up for the Ravens and one for the Gladiators that will not go their way. Yeah, it looks like Make they'll be two. able to get both of these now as Coast still pushes that left lane. So getting even more farm for themselves in that left oh, lane. No. But it looks like Mogal is going for just this complete mitigations build as we see a 7.5k gold lead 
Going for the low nose mask. We've seen this, uh, I think Deathwalker builds like this on Hades specifically with those Bumbas procs. That's going to help your true damage as well as the fact that you have so many mitigations with the Oni Hunter's Guard, with the low nose mask. So very difficult to kill this Baron as well as the fact that you have sustain. You've got a good bit of CC and you get some true damage with those auto attacks. So that's going to help out these late game team fights once level 20 will be reached. But it looks like trying to invade this red buff and mask kill Still has some damage here. Finds the blink stun onto Sap. Sap down to half HP. The shell, the shields, the Book of the Dead. Everything has been procced to try and take this hell down. Sap still lives throughout the end of the fight, but finally will go down after his revive. Lysemic treads to that circle protection back up and will deal some good damage to Silence. Mass kill, half HP pulled back into the coffin and crit down by Vaporous goes. He'll find the first one to find Mogal. We'll find the second one. Because, oh my god, 600 plus crits. Slam away the health bar of Sotos, and it's three down for the Gladiators and for only one of the Ravens. All right, J-Mac, listen, I understand that Sap's got healing, but I think if there's one person you have to kill right now it's on the Highland Ravens, I think it's the Jingwei that's critting for 600, dashing into these fights with no fear. And believe me, I understand Sap can just heal everyone up, but it just seems like Sap is not doing that crazy amount of damage when he's focused on the solid healing and the peel. The Jingwei is going to continuously ramp up and do more damage right now. The Ornate Arrow has been upgraded. Deathbringer has been started. This Jingwei is going to get even more annoying. 6-0 and right now for the ADC of the Highland Ravens. I think killing Sap has got to be priority number one, but if Mass Kill doesn't put some sort of pressure onto this Jingwei, this game's just going to keep climbing out of hand. Almost 10k, and there has not been a Fire Giant killed. There has been a Fire Giant pulled, we saw about nine minutes ago. Yeah. I almost forgot that that even happened over there. It's been so long up until this point. But I mean, uh, they, they aggress on Sap right at the top end of that, that entrance to the mid camp right there. And he literally ran all the way and got to the tier one tower before they were finally able to at least proc the Scarab's Blessing and then get the Scarab's Blessing there, that being uh, the Guild of Gladiators. But that's just from all the healing he has in his kit, plus the Book of the Dead shield, plus the shell from Silence. I mean, good lord, how do you ever get through this hell at that rate? If the, I mean, the, they're finally getting the answer to the anti heal. We saw the Ankh come out there in that last fight. We see a Contagion now out of Rotwin. So the anti heal is finally starting to come online for this team. But I think you're right to highlight the fact that Coast flies into that fight, says, all right, it's time to fight, and it puts up 1,300 damage and two autos to kill Sotos. Yeah, and I think that's just the, the fact that Sap is eating the full brunt of the focus right now from the Guild of Gladiators. Mass kill has, you know, death immunity. If, if it was put on a Coast, of course, he has the airstrike. He has a lot of ways to immune that right now. So it looks like Sap itemizing quite well. It does have the sprint. I don't think Aegis really helps you survive that much. You're trying to run away. And the speedy breastplate. I don't remember if that's the vigilance or the breastplate of vigor. I don't remember which one it is, but the speedy breastplate is what I'm seeing. You will get a lot of movement speed on this hell when that is procced, as well as the sprint, as well as the heal. You're trying to run away from this Kali. Scarab's Blessing could not save that time. But again, if you're eating that much focus on the hell, the Jingwei is going to be free casting. Yeah. Coast did so in that last little team fight there. Now grouping up together are the Highland Ravens. Fire Giant, the only neutral objective left on the map as far as the major ones for these two teams to take. Like you said, almost 12 minutes ago, 11, 12 minutes ago, we saw a startup of it by the Ravens. And then they probably realized, yeah, sure, our healers are really good. We can get our, our, our healing stat pats up, but maybe we're a little undergeared to try and, and take down this Fire Giant as far as our damage output is concerned. Mogal will be able to juke away from Rotwin, but you can see the aggression by the Gladiators, everybody, aside from Coast, grouped up on this right slash middle side of the map. It's going to be very hard to try and kill Baron Somni. I mean, Mogao just is super speedy with the heal, has the Bumba's ticks now, so much lockdown, and it looks like they are going to pull this FG, but well, they don't even have their ADC to do it. Chernobog's going to get here right away, and they're going to engage. Yeah, Rapio finds three with that sweep earlier on. Mogao goes up into the coffin. Who is he trying to pull back in? He'll grab Mass Kill away from... Silence here, who had to use the Scarce Blessing on himself, but Mogao now the one in danger, does throw out that Vivid Gaze for a little bit of damage, not going to find much. Lestemix up into the Cthulhu Ultimate, Coast has walked into the team fight, lost half his health, and had to fly his way back up, a mass kill, can't find the last hit up against Mogao, and he goes down, he's the first one out in the team fight. Yeah, but that's, that's the Ankh already down, and if you didn't win the first fight, it's hard to win the second. Sap has the healing, they have the movement speed, the chase is on, but it looks like they're going to put their attention right towards this Fire Giant. Stemix is still in the area. Mogal teleports himself back into the fight, full HP. And you can see all the healing that's come from Sap to make sure this team is back and healthy. And the crits out of this Jingwei, plus all the attacks in the world. 
Means this fire giant will go down swiftly to the Highland Ravens. Major neutral objective going their way. And the Pyromancer also to the Ravens. Thought maybe we get the response there out of at least the Fury, but a rotation from Mogao, maybe spot out by a minion wave. That one scared the Gladiators off of it. Yeah, Mogao and Sap were on the way, and if you don't want to get caught out by the Baron at this point. Like I said, too many cooldown resets. You have the root, you have the life of the party, another root. You just, the chase down would just be super difficult to try and get away from at that point. And without the Chernobyl, probably not something you want to go for. Tier 2 tower in mid will go down. It looks like posturing towards this Primal Fury. There are two more Tier 2 towers to go through, but the lead looks like they already have all the Tier 2 towers, J-Max. That's what it seems like because of how massive this lead is. You don't usually get this sort of lead before FG. This is sort of the after FG push. Right now, the Highland Ravens looking pretty unstoppable. I mean, there's 3,000 golden towers still sitting on the map. The Ravens could very well push us to a near 20k lead here in game number one. The Ravens. A little bit of a stumble early on, a little bit of, a, of an early kind of deficit up against the Gladiators, but from like minute six onward, the Ravens have had complete control of this game. The amount of investment that the Gladiators have thrown towards the Ravens to try and hold them back here has not been able to pay off. I mean, with these Phoenix defenses, I imagine that's the only place we're going to see the Gladiators try and put up a defense here. I mean, uh, where do the Gladiators find success in their team fight up against these Phoenix defenses? I mean, Mass Kill has to, I mean, you, number one, you have to use a circle of protection and group the whole squad up. Make sure you're making the use of that because you have a little bit of healing in your own right. You got to make sure to use it. But I mean, even that, Silence has answered with an uh, Curse Onk as well. So that's going to be super difficult to try and deal with. But Mass Kill can defy death right now. Mass Kill is the only person that can get to Vaporish Coast and live through like three or four auto attacks and not die. So that's got to be where you put your pressure. Lestemix even right now recognize, hey, I can't build into this magic defense item. I have to go for more Fizz defense. The ADC is hitting me far too hard right now. So it doesn't even have that much physical defense just yet in the kit. So it's going to be hard, but I think you have to get Mass Kill on top of Fake Horse Coast and try to shut down this ADC because right now Jingwei is 7-0. and Finish that, ven that Venomous Deathbringer and it's going to be too much damage. We do see a four-man group up of the Ravens on this left side. Mass kill in the jungle and fishing for a pick if he can find one. But now with Mogao rotating back over, Mogao will spot out Mass kill and make sure to let the team know that somebody was lurking within the jungle. Mogao will split himself off over towards the mid lane, so it'll now be a five versus four on the left side of the map. Perfect chance for the Gladiators to go in, but the pull maybe just off the mark there by Rotwin. Mogao now rotating over a full five versus five defense. At this left side, Phoenix, who will be the first one of the Ravens to pull the trigger to start this fight out. Mogao finds some good healing, and some good damage up against Rot when a quick charge away. But the Gladiators are not going to initiate, and neither are the Ravens. Yeah, Sap's cleanse is down, but they still are not deterred here. The Phoenix is about half HP, but Mass Kill finally will open the door and maybe wrap around. A little scared now, now the door's closed. Yeah, the door has shut down on him, so he's going to have to make the long trek back around. Maybe push out some minions to give his team a little bit of help here. But Rodwin is going to go in with that call. Lestemix as well, up into the top. Rodwin pulled to the coffin and pulled to his grave. A porous coast finds the first kill of the team fight. Lestemix down to a quarter HP on his Cthulhu, and Vaporous Coast is going to dive to the back line. Three autos put Zotus in critical range, and one more to put him in the grave. Toddy Lowe, Vaporous Coast, finds another crit. That's a triple kill for the kid, and Lestemix and Mass Kill still alive. But you see Vaporous Coast using that fountain to get himself back in the sky to find the fourth kill. Vaporous Coast on a Quadra kill, and you bet he's going to try and get these crits to take down Lestemix. Can he find enough damage to take him down? Vaporous Coast finds the Penta kill to end the game, and the Highland Ravens take game number one. They still don't have the Phoenix, J Mac. They can't hit this what? Titan. What are they doing? <laughs> <laughs> they gave up on the fight. So they, 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 who cares about the Titan? Who cares about the Phoenix? Who cares about the Titan? Vaporous Coast picks up what? That's like a starter fourth competitive Penta kill at this point. Now they finally will finish the Phoenix, grab that Titan, they can end the game. All right, you know what, Coast? I understand the fact that we hype you up too much, and I will say, Sap took the full brunt of the focus from the Guild of Gladiators. They recognized how much healing was in this comp. They recognized how much healing was in this draft. They said, we need to kill the hell first. But when you try to put the, so much pressure into the hell, I mean, Jingwei just gets to crit everyone.
Vaporish Coast literally walked into the enemy fountain to proc his passive to chase down mass kill. That is how committed he was to getting this kill, man. I mean, you want the everyone wants a pentakill. I would like That's one, wild. but I would have done that, and I, I wouldn't have been able to, but Coast does get the pentakill, and again, I think being able to free cast on the Jingwei, a lot of the reason that was able to happen. Yeah, they Porsche Coast and the boys of the Ravens find a nice win here in game number one. Can they keep up that same level in game number two? We'll find out right after this. Everybody fall down once. Yeah, every lug will fall down once. Yeah, everybody fall down once. Yeah, every lug will fall down once. Hold it when it come. It ain't gonna stay when it drop it when it fall down. Pick that up. Hold it when it come. It ain't gonna stay when it drop it when it fall down. Pick that up. Sick of love slipping through fingertips. Watch that flame keep it flickering. All that bickering, enveloped in bitterness. I think we bigger than all of them little things. Love unconditional, disaster is imminent. We ain't got minutes to spare, but in divvy up. I know what you did, you did, cause you human and no man is perfect, so I expect you. Yup. Yeah. All that's said is done, all that's done, gone. Everybody fall down once. Yeah, every lug will fall down once. Yeah, everybody fall down once. Every lug will fall down once. Hold it when it come. It ain't gonna stay when it drop it when it fall down. Pick that up. Hold it when it come. It ain't gonna stay when it drop it when it fall down. Pick that up. Listen to me. This love is a rocky road. Don't know who you are till you get too close. Yeah, got a heart that's good as gold. Put some respect on my name. It's in the past, don't you worry, baby. I won't budge, won't judge, that's a promise, baby. Cause we could all use a lifeline, make it last a lifetime. Picture perfect scenes ain't the model, baby. Uh, uh, uh. Sliding down the runway, church on Sunday, beach two birds in. Holy matrimony, tricks and ponies, bells and whistles, gold This is so official, yeah, they're bearing two dubs. Honestly, no matter who around us, long as you around, cause I would never give this up. Yeah, no matter who around us, listen to the sound of me, plus you want to dance with me now. All that said is done, all that's done, gone. goes to the Highland Ravens and in that game it was a pentakill by Vaporish Coast where they also forgot to grab the Phoenix along the way they got a little too hyped up into the into the action there but nonetheless the Ravens do close out that game to start out this set up against the Gladiators with a 1-0 here in the set and that puts the Ravens that much closer to being able to get a final win here in their last week of the first phase of the SEC it's J-Mac and Charlie here getting ready to go into game number two but I mean Charlie it felt like from about the five six minute mark the Gilded Gladiators had finally kind of hit the gas pedal, and then uh, right. they never took the brick off. Yeah, it seemed like the Gladiators recognized pretty immediately how much healing the comp had, and they recognized that Sap was going to be the biggest outlier of that comp. You know, we, there's a lot of healing from this hell. We want to shut that down immediately. But when you put all that stock into trying to make sure hell can't heal, there's a Jingwei that pretty much was able to do this consistently. Just boom, boom, boom. Look at those crits. So many of them. We saw the pentakill. We saw the 12-0. and 0. You got to give credit to Sap for taking the full brunt of the damage. Silence for the clutch ultimates and Coast for just auto-attacking people. 
So five autos in an updraft to solo his enemy hunter at that point in the game. And then the game winning push right here with Vaporous Coast grabbing himself a pentakill. If, if, if what I checked is correctly here, this should be his fourth competitive pentakill. And fun fact, that's his third one that he's had with Rapio on his team as his jungler here. So that's always got to feel good for your hunter, knowing that you've got somebody to stick by your side. He's got all this. And that's just the play right there that's nuts, that he, wa that he has uh, the mindset to go, you know what, I need to get to mass kill real quick. Let's just jump in the enemy fountain and get that passive procced up. I got to be honest with you. I think Lestemix feared him into the fountain. I don't even know if he went there willingly. Like, it, like, you he know what? It worked out because he was able to fly over, but I think he got feared in. and was like, oh, I might as well use this now. Just great peace of mind. And then here's like 5K damage into an immune titan because... You know, when you're getting pentakills, you you don't care about who you, cares. Who cares about the phoenix, man? You want the you want everyone else. Look, man, I didn't, I, I wouldn't even care if there was still like a tower up in that lane before <laughs> the phoenix. If you're timing for the pentakill, then just go for it. Why not? But let's jump into picks and bans here for game number two between the Ravens and the Gilded Gladiators. And I think you're right to talk about how much emphasis was put on sap in that game by the Gladiators. And in normal situations, you're right. It's a hell. You want to make sure that they get as little healing as possible, but. You can't be letting Vaporous Coast just consistently free cast in the back lines of all of these fights. Or I guess in the front lines of this case. Yeah, we'll have to see if they do just ban away that hell, because that could change up their mindset completely. If they want to shut down some of that healing, then they can focus more so on the team fight aspect. But Heimdall going to have to be banned away, because despite how good that Jingwei looked, Coast looks pretty solid on the Heimdall as well. A lot of safety in that pick, things like that. So wanting to shut that down makes a lot of sense. But... What will be the adjustment we'll have to see here because the nemesis and the thought, that's run of the mill for the Ravens. What are the gladiators going to do to adjust what they just saw? So far, not much. They're going to ban away the Agni. They haven't quite decided exactly what it is. They need to change about what they just did. Yeah, I mean, it will still be the Heimdall ban. That is also one of the other gods that he has gotten a pentakill on. But we, we pretty much just say when it comes to the EU region as a whole, Almost every single one of these ADCs in this region really loves going for this Heimdall pick, so no surprise seeing Let's that it may be a ban. It even goes so far as to being an actual first pick for some teams. Mm -hmm. There will be a Kepri ban here, and maybe that's one good adjustment here, because that Kepri was giving them a lot of troubles, even if Sap does elect oh, to go hey, back Sam. towards that same style of play with that Hell. That that revive that was coming out there by Silencer in those games was really prolonging so many of these fights. Yeah, I think Silence played pretty nuts on the Kepri, specifically a lot of roots, a lot of lockdown with the Abduct, but... When you ban away that Kepri, the first pick E set will be open, so they will take that one. Still a lot of healing, a great protection tool, a great peel tool as well. So that's going to be the option. They will answer back, taking away Jingwei from Coast and grabbing Thulu. That's going to be annoying. But a pick that they left open through all of this is going to be the Kalina, which is very interesting because Mogao does not play anything of the sort. Mogao is more of a, yeah, like a Baron Samany type. So this has got to be going in the jungle. what I was going to say. You guys are too quick for me. Yeah, they, they they heard, they're like, oh, you want Mogao's pick? Word, here you go. Here's Mogao's pick again. Is this his fourth time in a row that he has played Flourish. this god thinking about it? Because I I remember the last time he played, he played this god like two games in a row or something like that in the, in the sets that they were playing here. But Eset, Kalina, and Baron going to be the top three for the Ravens. Meanwhile, Persephone gets locked in here on the side of the glider. So a little bit more lockdown now over in that mid lane, especially with they have ultimate. Yeah, I was going to say, you got to ban the Uller, and they actually did. So smart call there, wanting to make sure that doesn't happen because I would say the one thing you have to worry about on Jingwei is getting, you know, bullied out of lane early, which Uller does pretty well. So that's going to be the option to take that away as well as the TM out. I think both smart options here. You don't really know. I mean, you assume that E-Set goes to solo, I mean, to support right now. So you can ban away mid lane safely, but they always could have that flex opportunity. We're going to see... What they do there, Fenrir, also going to be a pretty solid ban. We have seen Mass Kill play it a fair bit, so making sure that, that won't be the option. I think it's going to be a smart call. And it looks like Ymir is going to be the answer. That's going to be pretty solid for shutting down two of these characters. Clean, of course, could just go into a wall, but Baron and Eset, that's going to be annoying for them. Yeah, first time we go over here into the EU SCC at the least, so we'll get to see the Europeans' hands on this pick out here. Alongside the Cthulhu, so a lot of frontline presence, so a decent bit of lockdown here. The Ravens are not going to give up on this hell pick. They're going to grab that one for themselves. And still, a lot of healing on this team. I mean, between the Baron already, the hell. Now you throw Eset with her ultimate here. And then a Ho Yi. So Eset support, the name of the game here for the Highland Ravens. So we'll be seeing an Eset Ho Yi dual lane. Not a single quote unquote front line for this composition, though. Very squishy across the board. Yeah, I think the way that Mogao builds this Baron means. Probably be pretty tanky in his My own right, but you're right. No bounty. guardians or warriors oh, right now. This is the mage set. front line that you have to worry about, and you got to worry about Kalina in the back. You got to worry about Ho Yi, who's not going to be caring too much about these Jingwei crits. That's sort of why this passive is going to come into play a little bit. But 
Set is going to be the option for the Guild of Gladiators. So some hard carries on the on, in the jungle, most likely here in this uh, for the Guild of Gladiators. They have the Jingwei as well. So there's going to be a lot of damage you have to deal with if you are the Ravens. Yeah, we saw what Johnny did on this set last set here with the Hex Mamba. We'll see if Mass Kill can find similar success here for the Guild of Gladiators. Game number two between the Gladiators and the Ravens kicking off right now here. Gladiators need to find a win to push themselves to game three and get themselves that much closer to a guaranteed top four spot. Meanwhile, the Highland Ravens, they'll be sitting comfortable no matter what the results are here. It's J-Mac, Charlie, and Doug in game number two. Mogao still going with the same start. It still just kind of looks a little strange to me seeing the helmet up against the Cthulhu, but, I mean, it worked for him last time. He didn't really have any major threats to deal with, you know, considering that Mass Kill didn't get very active on that right side of the map. Do you, do you think maybe that's the adaptation? As you know, Mogao went essentially untouched at the very, uh, throughout the majority of this game. It is a Baron. He does have, like, you know, his, his heal. He does have his, his wrap it up, that snake to toss out there to lock one person down. But do you still maybe put a little bit more priority on trying to shut down this Baron? I definitely think that it, it's a free gank as long as that life of the party is down. But Lestemix can't really force it out is the issue. With the sustain that Mogao has, you only really have to itemize against this set. Last game it was the Kali. This game it's the set because... I mean, Cthulhu does not have much range. Baron can clear the way from a distance. It's hard to poke out a Baron Somni, especially when you don't have beads. You're pretty much getting hit by that heal every single time. It's very difficult to try and poking out a Baron, at least in this matchup. So I think it's just smart play by Moga. You get the Bumbas so you can clear the Harpy and the Blue Buff very effectively. And then you just don't sort of fight and you itemize against the jungle. I think it's a smart call here. You're always going to outpoke like this, and then you outclear, and you can get as much damage as you want. But you just got to watch out for that set, because I think set pretty much just pre beezes the party and you can get a free kill whenever you want. But this duo lane is where I want to look at right now. A lot of pressure from this Ymir. Double stun there out of Rawin. That's some good heads up play. But Coast and Silence did get a lot of poke back on towards Toddy. Mid lane, Maskeel versus Sotos. Maskeel will get behind Sap here and will chase this hell around, but Sap will not have enough healing to survive through here. Does manage to get the cleanse off, get some big damage back up against Maskeel. But Rapio is turning it around. He'll find the first blood of the game in the 2v1. And now Sap can fall back to his teammate, but the skewer will go through. Mass Kill will trade it out. And it'll be mid for mid in the mid lane. Rapio played that pretty much perfectly. Don't try to peel for your mid laner. Get the first blood bounty first. That is your best option. Because in that regard, you don't give Mass Kill this big influx of gold. You get it for yourself, and you don't put your mid laner even further behind. I think that was the best play that Rapio could make. Try to get level three as quickly as possible, clear those minions, and then get first blood first. So that's going to be a great option for the Highland Ravens to use some of that pressure. Both jungles walk away with a kill, but Kleena, just a little bit more gold. Yeah, a little bit more here, and you can see that reflected on the side of the Highland Ravens, about 700 up to their name to start this one out. And Last game, it was, it was you know, a one-for-one -one trade that went to the way of the Gladiators to start things out, and now Ravens will flip the script here in game number two to find a victory for themselves in that mid lane to start things out. Pretty much even levels across the board, and as far as all the items are concerned, we do see a very early Cursed Donk this time. Last game, it was a shell out of Rotwin in that first Relic spot, but this time, not going to delay any further, not going to try and wait when, to when that healing actually becomes a major problem. We'll grab that curse dunk first. Yeah, you don't have to worry about the revive, but the healing you still have to worry about right now. Saf right. is going to be able to sustain a fair bit once that Book of Thoth becomes completed. We've already seen how much damage this hell can do early on. So wanting to shut that healing down, probably a, a solid idea. Rapio, though, will invade the speed buff, but Lestemix recognizes this and is going to make the rotation over. They're going to have to fight, or Mass Kill's going to give up on the chase because not wanting to fight Kleena, at least right now, probably the name of the game. Yeah, no way to stop out that silence uh, is this set here. Lestemix would have to do a lot to get it. He would have to have like his entire passive ready to stack up and then hit him with the fear right after in order to find it there. So maybe recognizing that there is no way to stop Rapio, who did manage to invade and steal that speed buff from right under Mass Kill's nose, so that's got to feel good for Rapio, got to feel bad for Mass Kill. But with that first blood, Rapio can go back to base and start picking up those items very quickly on. Mogao will get the Tier 2 helmet and then upgrade that teleport to its Tier 2 as well, get himself right back to lane quickly. Yeah, I wonder what is going to be the go button for the duo lane right now, because Ymir usually wants to get active early. He set a lot of lockdown into the kit as well, so there could be a lot of fighting, but also the fact that you see a Jingwei usually tells you don't want to get too aggressive in this lane. On the other hand, you have a Ho Yi. Coast probably wants to take this 1v1 
whenever they can. But Maskill has the wraparound, and they do not have level 5 right now. The Highland Ravens, only level 4. Maskill probably waiting for just a few more CC abilities to go down before that comes in, but it looks like they know. The wall has already been dropped through. Beads out of Maskill to get away from the Ricochet Sun, but Silence will not have enough HP. That shield is not going to give him enough time. Vaporous Coast will use the Beads to leap himself away, and Raphael will join him in the lane, throw out some damage from that first veil, but not a whole lot there. Second kill now for the Gladiators here, and that'll put one for Toddy, one for Mass Kill. Yeah, early onset, pretty much one of the best chase down abilities in the game with Kingslayer. That ultimate, as long as you're able to bead the CC, you just have so much healing, movement speed, attack speed, damage, all of those things are gonna help you out. And the beads was perfect for Mass Kill, just to immune that stun from Coast to make sure that science falls there. Rapia will take some of those offerings away, but the ult comes in. The cleanse is also good. It looks like they are just going to disengage after that mid-camp fight. Silence, still level 4, though. You want that circle of protection online. Well, it's not here just yet. No, will not have it available to his name. Rotwin not without his ultimate as well. And that'll create an interesting like dynamic around like objectives and whatnot, because when it comes to Guardians, Guardian ultimates usually aren't great for securing things here, but Ymir's ult is kind of that opposite tail. I mean, it does a lot of damage out here. Maybe not as much as an E-Set ultimate, especially if you can get it fully charged up. It gets close sometimes. Yeah, I would say it's probably exactly the same, at least right now, until some damage gets online and you start putting some points into Silence's ultimate, just because Ymir, the base damage on that ability is crazy right now. But as you mentioned, Circle Protection is going to scale a little bit better as the game goes on. But Sap did finish up that Book of Thoth, finally going to have some some mana in the kit so you can spam your abilities a little bit more on this hell. We've seen the damage. Once again, the early damage of hell with this build is going to be pretty absurd. You don't really want to be getting poked out as a Persephone. The Divine Ruin and the Brawler's Beatstick are already finished. We touched on the Ankh already, so they learned from last game, J-Mac. They don't want to deal with the, the survivability of Sap's hell, but you, you still have to deal with the damage. Yeah, absolutely not. I mean, there is still equal amounts of healing, at least to say. I mean, they trade out a, a Shiva ult for a, for an E-Set ultimate instead, as far as that way is get concerned here. Rotwin is doing everything that he can to walk forward and <laughs> throw a wall up, and there's just so many abilities to stop in there between silence just to make sure that he doesn't get to walk up, drop a wall, and block them off there instead. But it will be the stacking item online for Sap. Stacking items across the board here, at least for the duo lane. Gauntlet Thieves and Devourer's Gauntlet both picked up. Rotwin hit by yet another Silence. Mass kill diving into the back line. Big wall by Rotwin will slow down Silence. And that circle of protection will not protect him enough here. Mass kill credited to that kill in the mid lane. Fighting a third one now for the Gladiators. Yeah, Silence going for the shell this game is going to be, you know, a few more kills, I imagine, going that way. It's just Eset not that tanky right now. Doesn't have the Thieves fully stacked. And the CC lockdown from a Ymir into the grasp of death. Set slows are going to be annoying. There's just so much damage. Circle protection is not going to help you here. But Sap finds a kill on a mass kill, but now could be pretty low. He's down to a quarter health, and the flowers out of Sotos will chase down. Raphael does get the dash out in time to get away from that Shards of Ice ultimate from Rotwin. So that'll make it a one-for-one -one trade in the mid lane, but a much more worthwhile one there for Sap. As he finds a kill onto the jungler mass kill, who already had two up to his name here. Highland Ravens. With a very small gold lead here, about 600 to their name, XP. However, the opposite way, about 600 over for the Guild of Gladiators instead. Yeah, it looks like just about the, the first blood bounty keeping them ahead at the moment in the gold department. But the XP will not tell any lies, at least for right now. Looks like a, a few level leads we're seeing. Just Rapio up a level at the moment, but pretty much everyone else is down a level. Toddy has level 9 to coast level 8, and you can see Raw win 7 to Silent 6, so that's going to be where the leads are, at least right now in the XP department, but it looks like Toddy is going to go for that Shuriken once again. Could be the Shadow Steel just for that anti-heal, but also Wind Demon could be an option, we'll have to see where they decide to itemize this Jing Wei, because again, the, the crits on the Vaporish Coast not going to be that effective right now with the Ho Yi passive, that's not going to be where you're really putting your full brunt of damage. You want to try to shut down the anti-heal, that's what you're really trying to deal with right now. Not so much in this lane, but once you make your impact in these 5v5s. We do see that Mogao has made a very slight adjustment to his build. Previously went for the Celestial Legion Helm, now going for the Jade Emperor's Crown. So, once we get to these late game fights and him being in front of a lot of these hunters and whatnot, he will be able to reduce some of that extra physical power a little bit more so to himself. Still though, not really worried about the damage that can come from Lestemix here. We do see a very slight lead in favor of Lestemix into this solo lane. Voidstone now finished up by him, along with that Tainted Seal still. So triple, and I'm sorry, quadruple anti-heal already out here for the Guild of Gladiators. And Toddy 
going to repeat what he did in game number one. We could see a Shadow Steel early. Mass Kill gets the silenced ultimate out. That circle protection now gone. And that's a win there for the Guild Gladiators. I've always called Jade Emperor's crowd Jade Emp, so I didn't realize until you just said it out loud that we have the Jade Emperor in yep. the game, and now Jade Emperor's crowd is. I just, it finally clicked for me. Right, Chorus Coast, though. We'll look for the 1v1. Airstrike's good, and now the chase will ensue. Tani went the wrong way on the fight, maybe hoping that somebody would be there for him, but instead it's Rapio who's waiting for him in the jungle. He'll throw out that Flickering Spirits and get a kill. Silence will be able to get out thanks to the help of Sap's cleanse to get away from that grasp of death. Nice little turn up play there by Sap in the mid lane to get the Ravens out of danger. And keep themselves ahead, but another big wall by Rot when Sap is trapped on the wrong side. We'll use the cleanse and we'll find a way through the side of the wall there and look at what Rapio is doing. He is already back and stealing some more back camps here to keep getting more farm up. Yeah, that was some great peel by Silence, canceling out those freezes, but Rapio, no Sotos is walking up here. It's a fair bit of damage, the Silence is good. Will not go for the chase. Too much damage. The red buff could still be looked at, though. Not going to go too far up. They know Toddy is here, so they're going to back up. Yeah, Toddy goes the wrong way during that last little trade out there. Not sure maybe what, where he was trying to go, you know, running away from his own base, maybe running away from his safety there, but did end up falling to Rapio. That gives Vaporish Coast some extra freelance over here in this lane. We'll go back to base to both of these hunters, maybe, once Toddy. Well, it looks like he'll stick around for at least one more wave. The Vaporge Coast going for that same solid build he did last time, going for that kin size second item. Silver Branch was the next call. And I'm curious if Toddy will go back to that Shadow Steel, make it a full five anti heal for five players on his team. Yeah, I would not be surprised given how much healing they have. If Rapio does go for the Soul Eater, that would just add another layer of that. Right now, not going to be the call that Yodens into either Brawlers or Crusher. We'll have to see which item they decide to go for. Probably that Brawlers, just because there is a fair bit of healing in Set's kit as well. You know, Cthulhu's going to have some, even Persephone would have a fair bit of healing if you do try to use those seeds as a sustained tool. So I think Brawler's Beatstick is going to be the option, and that will be the case. And building into another mage tree going to be pretty interesting to see what they go for. But Mogao will change up the build a little bit again as going for that Oni Hunter's Garb in that second slot. Not opting to go for any cooldown here, where that was last time it was a breast play. This time around, I think putting a little bit more stock into the magical damage. Persephone right now, Sotos, has been doing a fair bit. So once those rotations come in, you probably want to survive a little bit longer, I would say. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be trying to face tank Persephone's damage like I wouldn't want to face tank a Spirit Ball out of Silence. That and the follow-up damage out of Sap. Puts Maskill at critical health. He even had to use that Kingslayer for the extra boost to get himself out. Rapio will walk through. He can't go through that wall, but he can go around. And meanwhile, left side, Vaporge Coast drops the Suns on top of Toddy. Needs one more auto. But Vaporge Coast will not find it. Doesn't have the Ricochet available either to try and bounce that kill. But maybe Rapio can find it. No. Too late to get to that left side of the map. But all the pressure in the world here for the Ravens. The dual lane hunter, Toddy can't do anything up against Coast right now. And all that damage that was thrown towards mid lane, Sap's able to push it right back. Yeah, last game Coast was on the Jingwei, but was up against a Chernobog. Toddy, there's really no sort of 1v1 winner there. They just don't really want to fight. Hoi always wants to fight. Vaporish Coast on this Hoi <laughs> wants to look for these ricochets, try to box as early on as possible because this is where Hoi out trades you. Late game, Jingwei is just a hard carry monster. The crits are going to be coming through. It's going to be very annoying to fight. But right now is where Hoi wins this 1v1. So I, I'm not surprised that Coast is jumping in pretty much every wave, looking for these ricochets, trying to get aggressive. Whenever there's vision in the mid lane, we can expect to see this Hoi looking for a fight. So that's pretty much what Coast has been doing. And now has the level lead of his own, right? Level 13 to the 12 of Toddy. Probably pretty close to 14 at this point. So we'll have to see if Coast does keep a, a solid level lead over in this duel lane, but no sort of pressure towards this Gold Fury yet, J-Mac. No sort of ward vision on this objective just yet, neither one of these teams. I mean, last game, we saw a Fire Giant pull already at this time. This game, not going to be the case. <laughs> no, it'll be a little bit slower off this time around. Three to four are the kills between these two teams out. Sap going for that Book of the Dead build yet again. Went for last game, worked out well to keep him alive for so long during this team fights. Mass kill. Going for a transcendent second item. So getting some stacking online will get him a lot of extra power as well once that one is fully stacked up. But typically, typically when we see these transcendence builds, that, that kind of tells us the jungler isn't as concerned with these fights, definitely more focused on the farming aspect. So do you think that it's going to be a while before we see Maskill get back and involved in these fights? Yeah, I think Maskill's tried two failed ganks in the mid lane, but now, no, of course not. We'll look for the soul lane gank on the Mogao. Of course that was the option, but it's going to be very hard to dive this. He's got the coffin up. Unfortunately, he's going to hit Lestemix with it. Mogao 
Doesn't have the cooldowns to get that heal back up. Will not be able to get it there. Thought maybe he'd grab it for a mask. He'll get some, but no, he will go down to the jungler for the Gilded Gladiators, but a lot of time spent on that right side of the map. That gives the Raven some opportunities to strike in the left side with a 4v3 advantage. No kills going the way of the Ravens here, but they are able to strip away a couple of offerings from that obelisk and keep up that mid and left side pressure of a Porsche Coast level 14 on this Ho Yi. And they'll be able to continue this up. Low in the mid lane is Rapio. Rotwin needs one ability, like literally one ability, but mass kill will be the one to come in there and grab that one from behind. And the kill to Gladiator strike two for none. Wow, there's a lot to unpack here. Okay, number one, hold that thought because Coast is getting aggressive once again, trying to chase down Toddy. Will give up the chase because Toddy's going to run away. But really? lazy back, not going to be the option here. So we see the aggression in right lane. They juggle a tower aggro perfectly. They're able to kill Mogat. Usually when you see two in right lane and four in left lane and there's a circle of protection on the map, there's a Gold Fury attempt. That's not what happens. The Ravens try to get a little bit over aggressive. They go between tier one and tier two tower. They aren't able to find anything. So then they go for a red buff invade into a mid lane fight where they lose Rapio. You're two and one Kleena who is pretty ahead and you're giving mass kill another kill. So they get no sort of answer back for the, the gank in right lane as well as the tower falling. And then they lose another member. The Ravens still holding on to a gold lead, but I feel like they probably should have went for the tower. I mean, they had circle of protection. Yeah, I mean, it's a very minuscule lead right now. Only a thousand gold and XP, and that's even being buffered a little bit closer now towards the Gilded Gladiators. But that's not going to deter the Ravens from at least getting some farm across the board. Rapio and Sap will make sure to take down that Greater Scorpion, enhance up those buffs for their next rotation through for the team. The Highland Ravens, though, they still have that pressure. And uh, aside from the solo lane gank over towards Mogao, it, 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 this still shows and says to me that the Ravens want to keep getting these fights up, even though they lose that last one. They still want to keep that pressure up and, and still be able to find some openings for objectives here as they are grouping around this Gold Fury. But Tiny Rotwin will spot them out, and that'll stop that engagement for now. Silence will be frozen out. Hits a spear ball into Rotwin. Silence in the wall from Rapio. Hit some damage with that Veil, but not going to be a whole lot of damage. It's all turned back over to Rapio. Has to dash away, but Sotos will find the last shot of damage. Soto Protection not going to be there to help them out. And it sets Lysimics and Maskill into the back line. Sap is under fire on this He has no extra healing to his name. We'll get a little bit off in that fight, but Silence will go down instead. It's a double kill for Sotos, but Mayforce Coast able to find one up against Maskill in the midst of the fight. And look where Mogao is in the middle of four, keeping himself, keeping his team alive. Coast. Will jump out and over the wall, but it's a triple kill for Sotos. Yeah, Sotos finds three Mogao. Still pretty healthy here, but the Gold Fury is still up. There's a three-level lead in duo for Coast. There's a level 14 Jingwei, but you still can't step up to this Gold Fury right now. The rest of the Gilded Gladiators are standing tall. Mogao will try and throw out some damage, but is probably not going to be able to, but still is trying to steal away this Gold Fury. is not deterred. He's got a little bit of time, but he's a little too late to steal that one away with that first ability. Root is good, heal is good. Mogao needs literally one more ability to hit Rotwin. Good body blocks out of the to hold back the Baron and not allow those abilities to fly through. Mogao will not find a kill, will not find any follow-up after that Gold Fury. So finally, the Gladiator is able to even out this Golden XP back down to neutral, if even slightly in their favor. Yeah, it's definitely going to help out. If last game, Sap was the target right now, I mean, you gotta kill Mass Kill. This is the opposite side where Mass Kill is doing so much damage. Sure, Set's going in, doing as much damage as possible, and then dying, but it's just so much. Sotos gets the triple kill there, but Set in the back line, I think, was the real damage dealer. Sotos is doing a ton, don't get me wrong, but right now, this Kingslayer needs to be shut down. The anti-heal, they have Brawler's Beat Stick. That's pretty much it, at least for right now. So trying to focus down this set, not let the back line get is interrupted. I just don't think that the, the peel game is very strong right now. Silence used the circle of protection a little bit too early there trying to help out and it didn't work out that time around. As you mentioned though, the gold lead's not out of control right now. The Highland Ravens still have a pretty big lead for Coast three levels at the moment and he's at the tier two tower right now. He's not scared. Oh, no, I wouldn't, may, I I wouldn't <laughs> maybe say scared. not scared. Maybe, maybe more so playing a little bit respectfully here, recognizing he probably shouldn't be diving with no ward coverage over on this left side of the map here. Finally, Silence will drop one over by the Oracle Harpy Pit to spot out Rotwin. So maybe a good call by Coast to not try and fight under an enemy tier two tower this early in the game by himself. But then that wouldn't be a reason why he would be top player damage. It's just what Coast wants to do. I used top damage last game, keep it going this game. 
Yeah, I mean, he wants to find the, the aggression. Don't get me wrong. He's level 18 right now at 18 minutes. The top farmer in the game besides Lestemix, who is also level 18 right now. So wanting to keep your XP and your gold up, definitely the name of the game right now. Toddy obviously recognizes not wanting to fight the 1v1 was sitting at Tier 2 Tower starving the wave. So Coast had to walk up there to get the farm, but also once that ricochet goes down, probably has to back up. It looks like Pyromancer is getting pulled and Pyromancer is getting shredded. Mogal not going to get there in time, so that one will go the way of the Gilded Gladiators. But now we're seeing a 4v4 grouping as Coast just strips away this buff. So once these ADCs rotate over, that's when we're really going to see these FG pulls. But right now, Coast is very far up and the rotation is coming in. There are a couple on the way. A nice little ping out there by the mid laner and the support on the Ravens. To let Coast know, yeah, we know you got a three level lead. We know you're doing fine over there by yourself. But maybe, just maybe back off for a moment here. Because you got you got some guys on the way. Some good zoning by Lysimics though over at that Pyromancer. Does make it to where his team is able to grab that one earlier on. That finally brings an actual, air quotes, actual lead. At least as far as the Gladiator is concerned here, about a thousand gold up to their name, which is the first time they've had a lead since like minute five of game one, where they were also only sitting around a 1k. So, for all intents and purposes, we are still sitting even here, almost 20 minutes in. And a lot of that pressure, as you say, over towards Mass, even Sotos, you gotta pay attention to this mid laner, because this Persephone has been getting some sneaky damage in these team fights. Oh yeah, Persephone right now has the double flat pen, has the Soul Reaver working on the op shard. It's only gonna get more annoying to deal with. So putting some pressure on the Sotos is gonna happen, but that? a little bit of damage coming out of Sap right now. Even with the Book of the Dead build, almost finds a kill on a Sotos and will get the beads. Holds onto the Aegis though. So there still is one more survivability relic for the Persephone, but has to go back to base pretty much immediately. Yeah, we'll find back out there. It will be a Entangling Wings picked up. Root by sprint. Rotwin, the Sprout. The, the Sprout. Yeah, the Sprout. I, go, I call it Root Sprint. Ah, uh, no, Sprout's easier. One, one syllable, done. You don't have, to, don't have to worry about wasting two two breaths on it. Well, I'm not I'm not looking for easiness. I just think it's a cool relic. I, I like the idea. Oh no, it's great. I love that relic. That's such a fun relic to to go with. I've I've always just called it the Sprout though. All right. Well, we can we can agree that it's they're both cool names they and are. decide that it's going to be a great peel tool as well as a chase down if you need to. You can get getting down a relic for a relic is always going to be a good option. You know, you're used to blink in and then people pre beads because they're scared. Well, now you can entangling wings and they'll pre beads because they're scared. Oh yeah. A lot of value that Rotwin can find with this one. Even maybe it's trying to lock down inside of his own ultimate, keep them rooted so that way he can get a little bit of extra time for his wall. Lots of utility that could be had from that relic just for Rotwin's own sake here. On the opposite side though, it's not gonna be a phantom shell picked up by Silence to deal with these walls that have been a menace to his team. Instead, it's gonna be that fortifying shell. So a little bit of extra protection for his team whenever that ability or whenever that relic does finally pop and go on towards cooldown here. The Highland Ravens. Maybe Porsche goes hitting level 20 before the opposition, already five items deep into the build. And that might be the name of the game as we go towards the latter half. Early focus was thrown towards Sap, and good respect to thrown towards, and they're finally able to get those kills for the Gilded Gladiators. But now as we approach this late game, Charlie, do you continue putting that focus in the hell, or do you start to divert that maybe over towards May Porsche or, or even Mogal? Well, probably right now, still shutting down the healing will be the most important thing, just because if you are focusing May Porsche Coast and he is able to get out, he just gets healed back up. I don't think there was anything wrong with focusing down Sap, but you just can't let the Hoi free cast. So it looks like Lestemix immediately itemizing into Jade Emperor's Crown, Witchblade, and Spectral Armor, trying to shut down some of these crits coming from Vaporous Coast before they happen. I think it's a good way of balancing what you have. We're saying, hey, we're going to put some anti-heal into this hell. We're going to make sure we shut down this hell, but also we're not going to let the Hoi get a pentakill. We're not going to let the 12-0 the <laughs> Hoi come out this game. So I think a smart call by them. Gilded Gladiators, though, are grouping up towards this Gold Fury at the moment. They're not going to pull it, though. Looks like Toddy will go back to base, but Lestemix has made the rotation over. Both solo laners are here, but they're not going to make the pull. Saying, yo, I'm not going to get crit to death in my own fountain again. It's not going to happen twice in a row here, says Lestemix with those item pickups here. Even getting me the Tainted Breastplate online here, so that one will provide some extra anti-heal towards the enemy team. But as you're right to highlight, a lot of grouping around this Fury. The ward coverage is in favor of the Gilded Gladiators, even having a deep ward right by Vaporous Coast. So they'll know that this Hunter is here. They know that Mogal was on this side of the map. Still going for that Lona's Mask. So, so far, the only real change in items was at least that Celestial Legion Helm for the Jade Emperor's Crown. That's the only difference. Maybe a little bit of difference in priority on building it here, at the very least. Now we have a four-man group up towards this mid-tier one. Ravens maybe aiming 
Just wanted to find out here, but Maskill could find the loop around in the jungle. Yeah, Maskill not being spotted out by a ward just yet, but will keep looping around. Still, Rapio probably is going to sense this one out, but goes into the wall instead, does not quite see it, but Coast is going to have to be aware of this as Lamoga goes into the ult. Rapio is going to throw some damage inside the wall, throw out one, and Rapio will go, or I'm sorry, Coast will find the kill into that one. Rotwin goes down, Lestemix into the sense of the magic shot, Rotwin finds a four-man knock-up in the midst of all of that. Rapio on the run himself, Lestemix taking a lot of damage from this bear insomnia as soon as he gets out of that descent mass will get rooted out and coast will pick up another kill that's two for the hunter on the highland ravens in that team fight and that puts the gladiators on the back foot yeah that was a perfectly timed snake by lamogao making sure to root out right out the descent of the madness but mass kill still has the ultimate is holding a red buff right now and mogao is in that mid lane sotos is going to make the rotation over the carries are here there are no sort of follow-up though the tanks are dead right now it's a carry battle on this fg yeah, and they have enough to be able to deal some damage back to them or stop the fire giant at the least toddy does use the beads and the agility to get away but coast will go right back in that forces the airstrike and the leap out of Sotos. But poor Maskill was left all by himself. He didn't get the memo that the fight was around the fire giant. He gets picked off in the mid, and the hunter and the carry in the mid got scared away from the gladiators. And that gives the Ravens the time to pick up the fire giant and pick up the pyromancer. Yeah, right now, if you're too strong trying to fight into it, the, the fire giant, it's not going to work out. You did your best. You delayed it. If Maskill was able to find a kill in mid, maybe that fire giant call goes a little bit better. But not going to be the case. They had the circle of protection, the cooldowns were there, and I think Mogao's build, again, is paying dividends. Having someone this tanky, but also with the cooldown resets, you have a lot of lockdown, sustain, everything is going to help out. Rapio could go for the wraparound here, but it looks like they are just going to go for this tower, go for the possible invade on the buffs, Primal Fury, then back up. Still a tier 2 in left, and a tier 1 and tier 2 in right, so we're still back to that point where there's a fair gold lead for the Ravens, but it could get much scarier if all these towers go down. The Guild of Gladiators, though, they're not going to try and defend this just yet. They're going to get some farm on the right side of the map. The left tower will go down. Do you have the Fury to fall back to is the Raven, so with grabbing that tower. And look at the golden hand that the Hunter has. By taking down this Fury, Vaporish can legitimately just Hold go up, back to base, go back to base. And not only by his Deathbringer, but also by the Glyph for his Deathbringer. He's on 3,700. Might as well grab your purple buff along the way. Why not? What's a, what's a little extra gold in the pockets of the carry here? And this should be a maxed out build now for Vaporish Coast as we start entering these late game team fights. As we start getting through with a full Fire Giant, it will be a fully bought in Venom Deathbringer. What a, what a good feeling to go back to base and full buy a 3,600 gold item. Yeah, and then you look over at Toddy and no upgraded starter. Still working on the Chinzai's last item, so it's going to be a little bit before the Jingwei is able to match that sort of DPS. But, I mean, Sotos is still doing a fair bit of damage. Still top of the player damage charts, even higher than Coast right now. So there's Persephone you still have to watch out for. Again, double flot pen, upgraded starter, Soul Reaver, Obsidian shard. So... Everyone, tanks and squishies alike, are going to be feeling the brunt of this damage from Persephone. you got to watch out for that. But Mogad just gets the Stone of Foul. Even more mitigations. Always going to round Yeesh. out this build. Making sure that not only are you tanky, not only are you annoying, you just have the sustain. You have the, the lockdown. You're, you're essentially a setup bot for your team. You have so much healing. You have so much lockdown, as I mentioned. So going to be very annoying to deal with this Baron. And look where he's at right now. Versus four. Just standing there, and no one's even looking at him. Yo, Baron versus the world right now in mid lane. Well, at least against the minions. And he'll win that battle, no problem there. He'll have a minion wave coming up towards mid. And we saw this last game. There's a group around the left side, Phoenix. And the Ravens ignored the Phoenix. They went for the fight, got the Penta, and then went, oh, yeah, we need a Phoenix. But now they'll step up towards it. A silence on towards Lestemix. Some damage on towards Rawin out of Rapio from the wall. Rawin down to 12. 12, uh, 12, that's a random number for me to say percentage. <laughs> I was going to say 10 and 20 at the same time. And here we are, Rawin back at the fountain. But that'll leave the Phoenix open, but the Ravens not really going towards it yet. No, they have not auto-attacked it yet. They still are trying to poke this one down, but Lestemix will go in. Descent into Madness is good, but 30% health now on this Cthulhu. He'll get some healing back for his team. A wall by Rawin to keep himself and the rest of the team back from the Highland Ravens. This Phoenix, though, not taking a whole lot of damage. The carries have not put... The brunt of the damage then. Finally, Vaporous Coast will invest a few autos to take that one down. The left side Phoenix will fall, and the entirety of the Ravens can move towards mid, because with that push up from Moga earlier, they've got a minion wave right behind. Yeah, they still are able to go for this mid, but a good knockup into the mire. A silence is going to get rooted out, but Rapio's hiding in the wall. 
Good cleanse will get silenced out. Rapio gets some damage with that veil through the wall. Silence, though, needs a little bit of extra healing from Sat before he's willing to tank that one up. Mogout trying to find some extra healing. We'll find a wrap up. On to Toddy, we'll find the big heal as well. That's going to put the carry away on the side of the Gilded Gladiators, but that wall will keep Mogal back, will keep the Ravens back, but Rawin's the one in danger of the coffin to try and drag him back in. But Vapor's Coast has the crits to take him down. The root is good on the Lestemics. The heal, though, from Mogal is keeping this team alive and healthy, but Rapio is not so much in the back line. Fire Giant buff has worn off, and the Phoenix is still very strong, but Coates is going to jump in because so much damage. The Aegis will keep Sotos alive, and now the Teleport's coming, and this Phoenix is still alive, J-Max. Phoenix at half HP, and so is Silence. Rapio needs a lot of extra health from this hell. Vaporous Coast is the one in danger. Half HP of his own has to jump back out. And Mass Kill looping around the back, but that Kingslayer is down. He'll go in and find a big skewer, but has to use the beads and the Aegis to get himself out, but he won't go far enough. Rapio turns around the kill, and it's two down for the Gladiators. And it looks like this Phoenix finally will be looking that here. Mogao has a Sight. fair bit of HP in the cooldowns, but Sotos is still tanking here. Silence drops the circle of protection. Mogao drags Lestemix back into it for Sap to get the kill. Now it's down two again because Rotwin has respawned. But Fire Minions coming in the left side. Minions coming up the middle. It's a three versus five defense. The wall from Rotwin will hold a few back, but that's only going to stop them from retreating. They don't care about the run. The Highland Ravens, they want the fight. They're going to find it. It's a double kill for Coast, a 2-0 for the Ravens. And they will find their victory here in week number five. I mean, so much healing coming out of Sap. Lamogo had some perfect just amounts of lockdown and healing as well. Just so much. And then Coast is able to just auto attack through. Obviously, the peel from Silence was there as well. The whole team played so well. But Baron being able to frontline that much, I think, was the reason they could stay there for so long. The Fire Giant buff wore off. And they were still like, we could still walk for this Phoenix. Why not? I mean, between that Lonos mask, that Oni Hunter's Garb, the Stone of Fall they pay. I mean, this was a mitigation heavy uh, Baron Sami and Mogal plays it to perfection. I mean, that's four games now in a row that he's played that and four wins. If I'm a team looking at the Ravens in the future, Trelly, I might not be giving them that god too many more times. Yeah, probably not. Just the amount of sustain that they had, it just was very annoying to deal with. I mean, you didn't have the damage to match that, and you can't save your objectives if you just keep continuously getting run at. Well, congrats to the Highland Ravens on their 2-0 victory. We're going to take it to a quick break, and then we'll come back to break down that set right after.
welcome back to the Highland Ravens 2-0 victory here over the Gilded Gladiators in our second EU SCC set of the day. We still got one more that will go on after this. We'll talk about that one once we get to that point here. My name is Jim Mack. I got Trelly here to help me break this one down because it was a back and forth game. At least in the early stages, the Ravens took early control. But the Gladiators were able to fight back. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we got towards 20 minutes in the game. We had like a 1K gold separation here. Uh, but, Charlie, it just seems that when it comes to these team fights, the Highland Ravens really know how to step into these. Yeah, they just had so much CC, and they were able to let their carries do what carries are supposed to do. Just, you know, do as much damage as you possibly can. As long as the, the lockdown was there, the peel was always there. I mean, with a Hell, with an E-Set, and a Baron Zomini, the lockdown as well as the peel is going to be plentiful. Yeah, I mean, sustain still the name of the game. No matter how much anti-heal was built here on the side of Gladiators, it just was not enough at least to keep down the amount of sustain that the Ravens had built themselves here. Rapio getting a lot of sneaky damage throughout this game. Big Porsche Coast again, maybe not necessarily getting to free cast the same level that he did as that Jingwei, but even in a fight like this, I mean, Lysemix is being controlled well enough by Mogao and by Silence that Vaporish kind of essentially gets the free cast. Yeah, and then Lamogo gets the perfect lockdown after the fact, and they just chain CC so perfectly. I mean, as you see, the, the gold lead was not there at the time, but I think the, the duo lane lead, Coast was able to find a three or four level lead even when the team was behind in that point. So that is exactly what you want your ADC do to do against the Jingwei because Jingwei is just so safe in that lane. You're not going to find too many 1v1 options. You're not going to find too much pressure, but... You can find the lead because she doesn't really want to fight you, and that's exactly what Coast did. Then once you rotate in, you just have all your items built up, and the Jingwei can't match that pressure. Yeah. So with that, the Highland Ravens do find themselves the victory here over the Guild of Gladiators, and they're able to continue to hold their spot here in the top four. That means for the Gladiators, though, there is still some potential for them to maybe fall down into that fifth spot because the Sticks Ferryman, the next set that's going to be coming up afterwards with the Aru Scorpions, it's going to be a lot of weight here for the Ferryman. They need to find that win if they have any hopes of making their way into the top four to try and find their way to Masters. Because here in this first phase, Charlie, that's the ultimate name of the game is for these top four teams. They get to go to Masters, they get to play on land, they get to play up against some of the other SPL squads and up against that NA squad. So let's take a look at the schedule one more time here at the end of this set to kind of see how things have gone so far. 2-0 to the Mambo, and now a 2-0 to the Ravens with only one set left to go for the European SCC. That'll be between the fifth and the sixth seed, respectively, the Ferryman and the Scorpion to close out our day. Yeah, the Hex Mambo definitely chose a great time to, to turn up the heat here. I think they started off 0-2 with a star-studded roster. It's really good that they decided to turn on the heat here. They were able to take down the number one seed, the Warks, who were 4-0 going into that set with a 2-0, which I would definitely consider an upset. Despite the names that are on this roster, we know they can perform, but... They just didn't really choose the right time to turn up. Now, though, they're here. This is exactly when we want to see them playing at their peak, though, because this is when we get to see the most competitive action up against these SPL teams, things like that. Right, and as you can see by the standings, with the Gladiators and the Ferriman at fourth and fifth with one game separating them, this could be a chance for the Sticks to take that one away from them and maybe put the Gladiators out of their chances to go to the Masters Tournament here in a few weeks. Uh, like I said, you get to play against some of the NASCC squads, which is where the Guild of Gladiators started kind of finding their play style more than anything else when they came out here and played against North America for SPL qualifiers about a month or an, a month and a half ago. Wow. Mm -hmm. It was really that long ago, Oh, Trump. yeah. It, where has the time gone, and wh what timeline are we in right now? I mean, Smite's just been, the SPL specifically has been so competitive. It's We're just zooming through. I mean, you just think about, like, the, the records that we've seen in all of these competitive matches. It sort of just meshes together in your mind, because there's been some good Smite to watch. Worlds was almost five months ago, Trelly. That is wild to me to say. That, that blows my mind. I guess technically closer to four because we're about to hit May 5 minus one. That goes four there. So we still got one more SEC set to go, though, here for the European region. Make sure you stick around for that one. That's going to be coming up right after this break. <laughs> 